quite the start to the morning. <laughs> I found myself uh, having some conversations with some people and I'm going to take five minutes here and have a little bit of a rant that could influence your life for the next 50 years. And the three points that were brought to my attention, the first one was about direction and story. And the second one was about coaching and mentoring. And the third one was about living an extraordinary life. So I'm going to get on my soapbox now and, and share some thoughts here. First, direction and story is so important in living our extraordinary lives. And it's going to be linked to the third one. Because if you're stepping out today into uh, being for the world, and you don't have a sense of direction and the story you're going to share, then it's sort of like standing on quicksand rather than standing on a very solid base. It's, it's really sloppy for you. And this morning in, this, in these conversations that I was having, um, people didn't really have a sense of their imagined future. And I'm going, well, in today's world, I think that that's really an important element about living your great life, uh, living your extraordinary life is to have that baseline to, to stand on it and to be able to share your direction and your story. Or else what happens between the imagined future and your current reality, it's going to be a big, gaping hole, sort of like standing on the side of the Grand Canyon thinking you're just going to jump over. No, you've, you've got to sort of figure out how you're going to do that because that hole is big. So that, that's the first thing that got me. And um, I lovingly shared some ideas um, with the two people I was um, having the conversation. But I was with a group meeting and someone said, well, coaching and mentoring are the same thing. So why do we need to make some, to differentiate them? And I went, well, well time out, <laughs> time out. They are not the same, yet they are connected. Let me give you an example. And this is what I used. I said, if mentoring was like an apple tree and coaching was like an orange tree, they're both trees, they're both fruit, but yet they result in something different for you when you experience them. Looking at this connection between coaching and mentoring and this notion of orange and apple tree, what I'm attempting to share is that even from this perspective, the coach is asking the coachee questions for the most part, whereas the mentee is asking the mentor questions. It's the intention. It's the where do the questions lead to. So from a coaching point of view, leading more to performance improvement and a mentoring about learning and development and growth. Now, I can appreciate that we can differentiate that and dive down into that and, and unpack it a little bit more. But that was what I shared in the meeting. And the person went, oh, okay, so we do have a, a fruit orchard here, but yet We've got trees that are apples and trees that are for oranges. And I said, yep, you got it. And they said, okay, I'm understanding where you're coming from now. And I said, whew, okay, here we go. But the third one was, it was an individual that I was chatting with. And I said, you're moving into your 60s. Where are you going? What are you doing? How are you going to live your life? Why are you going to live your life? Are you going to lead an extraordinary life? Could you use coaching and mentoring as part of your life? And they sort of sat back in their chair and they sort of looked at me and I'm not sure what you're trying to get at. My life is okay at this point in time. And I stood up and I said, no, 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 please understand. You could have an extraordinary life. And that extraordinary life is about you making the commitment to that extraordinary life and using the language that's going to get you to that point. The language of appreciation, the language of expansion, yet being practically oriented in what you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis, I, I get that. And when I started to share from that perspective, the person sort of, hang on, I, I, I see what you're talking about, so share a little bit more with me, will you? And I said, well, here's another phrase for you. It's about, to evolve your legacy. 
there's a, a legacy story that you're going to share with the world. It's people talk about, well, you're here for a reason. <laughs> I use the phrase to evolve your legacy. And there's a legacy of your life, your leadership, the legal aspects of your life in terms of what you're leaving behind or how you're going to live with what you have at this point in time. I'm thinking philanthropically uh, here. The notion of literacy about your hierarchy of values and how you express those out. And the fifth one is around what I call leverage, or I prefer the word leverage. So I'll flip out the E for the O and you've got leverage. And it's about this notion of having a lover over the age, you know, lover of yourself, lover of the people that you're working with over the time that, that you're here. And I get also, there's this notion of love and rage, but that's sometimes what you have to deal with to, to find times to love. And sometimes you deal with the rage, whether it may have been coming from you or you're feeling it from around you. So I said to them, in the quietness that you're talking about living a good life is very different than sharing your lived experience of an extraordinary life. And one of the ways in which to do it is to take up an educating approach like coaching or mentoring and or coaching and mentoring, whichever way you'd like to do it. I know that I've dug deep into the world of mentoring. I'm a facilitative mentoring. And one of the things that I'm doing is I'm exploring this concept of the wealthy, wealthy you. And you'll notice underneath the uh, video here, the spelling of the words. And, and I share with you that I'm going to bring this to the surface because as we move into our next 50 and the sixties are like the new fifties and the, 70s are like the new 60s. I, I'll put that out there and I'll share it from that perspective. There's an element of understanding what it means to be an elder in your elderhood and then to be able to take up the mantle of serving as a mentor and then embracing the world of celebrant. Then moving into weaver to really see the whole system, whole person perspective. And then to find that word that is your word for the world and turning it into a noun. My word was magnificence. And therefore my fifth element of the story that's unfolding is that I'm serving as a magnificent. And when I shared this with the person, they, they really did come to life. There was like a sparkle came back into their eyes. And I know that she's gonna continue the conversation with me uh, over the days to come and I look forward to that and if there's ways in which I might be able to be of assistance to you please leave a comment below uh, the video and again uh, make sure that you comment and like and share and subscribe and ring that bell so that uh, we can continue to um, share videos through YouTube or wherever else that you might find this video so with that, um, heck, I might even go on past my five minutes, but this little rant that's um, putting a little bit of extra um, feeling into my uh, presentation, it's because what I'm sharing with you will influence your next 50 years. Because when you start to understand about knowing your direction and story, about looking at coaching and mentoring and not treating them as the same thing, and making a commitment to live an extraordinary life, possibly as a mentor and having your direction and story, then that is a way in which to evolve your legacy, to live an extraordinary life. And I will go so far as to say, to eco-create the well-living world. I think that is a great way, an extraordinary way in which to be for the world. With that, take care.